So let's get into the Word of God today. Let's get into the Word of God today. Well, we'll start by reading two very powerful scriptures. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And this month, we've been talking about supernatural living. And what exactly is supernatural living? What we're talking about is this. How we can produce supernatural results in our daily living. One of the things that you would know is this, and this is familiar to everybody. Everybody knows that there are hindrances and barriers and limitations in our system. And they're just there. They're just barriers, hindrances, limitations in your business. Some people, it's a business deal you want to make happen. And there's this huge barrier you're facing. And the barrier could be somebody that is trying to obstruct it. It could be limitation. It could be funding. Some kind of barrier is there. Some other people, it's the fact that they have a medical condition and they need some kind of help. And that barrier is literally there. And all those barriers are there. And how do we use the power of God to be able to deal with these barriers? How do we use the power of God to be able to deal with these barriers? So let's turn our Bible to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 35, um, chapter 10, verse 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. The Bible says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty to go to the pulling down strongholds, casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Second Kings chapter three, another Bible reading. Second Kings chapter three, verse twenty-four. The Bible says this, and I want to just see. You must maybe I should say this first of all. You must remember that the natural is a product of the spiritual. 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 So the, the physical world is a child of the spiritual world. The physical world is a child of the spiritual world. How do I know? In the beginning, God made the heavens and the earth. The earth, the physical region, came after. The physical world is a product of the spiritual world. Hebrews 11.3 says that through faith we understand that the things we see are made of the things we do not see. Meaning that physical materials are made of materials that have spiritual substance. That the physical things we see are not product of other physical things that the physical things we see are product of what spiritual raw material and this is what i'm saying if the spirit realm made the physical raw material the spirit realm can control the physical raw material if the spirit realm made the physical world the spirit realm can control regulate and orchestrate the physical world that's what i'm going to i'm saying this to you because listen to me Physical problems can be stopped by spiritual problems. Spiritual problems cannot be stopped by physical problems. You know why? Because spiritual problems are on a higher level. That's why you will hear someone say something like this. And let me give you this testimony. There was a lady, and sometimes the way miracle works is, you know, sometimes even me myself, I'm learning. There was a lady, her stomach was just growing very big. We're just growing very big. We're just growing very big. And she had gone to the hospital and done all sorts of things and done all manner of tests. This is a period of two years. And the doctors could not just tell why her stomach was getting big. And the challenge is this. Because they couldn't tell why her stomach was getting big, what was the other challenge? They could not treat her. So one of the healing services, someone brought her. And as I prayed for her, you know, the stomach didn't go down. But she had another hospital appointment the next week. For the first time when she went to the hospital appointment, they found what was wrong with her. The question is this. Why couldn't they find it before? If someone's medical condition is caused by spiritual forces, there's no kind of machine that can find it. That's what I'm going to. There's no kind of machine. They will just tell you that it's undiagnosed. I was looking at some couple and I said, what is wrong medically? The man told me, he said that they said I can have a baby. The woman said I can have it. I said, well, he said, but the two of us can have it. It's called, um, it's a new medical thing that I think is, um, son is telling me, that the two of them are fatal, but they can't have children together. It's incompatible. What? It's incompatible, rather. It's incompatible. There are things like that. So for some reason, if this man still is somebody else, you'll get pregnant. 
a built man says someone should get pregnant, but two of you together, it's incompatible. And I'm saying so because, because we live in a very sophisticated generation. The tendency to think that it's all about the things we see is very high, but very deceptive. I'm telling you. The tendency for you to see. And you must understand we engage on the spiritual dimension. I'm telling you. We engage on the spiritual dimension. There is a natural realm. There is a spiritual realm. There is a natural realm. I know there's a lot of spooky things said about the natural realm. But there is really a natural realm. But there is also what? A spiritual realm. And the spiritual realm is ahead of the natural realm. In the spirit realm, there are beings, there are cities. How do I know? Heaven is of a spiritual material. But it doesn't mean it's empty space. Because the Bible says, in the spirit, there are walls, there are cities, there are streets in the city, in heaven. So there's a spirit realm. There's literally, it's, it's like you said, a space. The fact that space doesn't operate like earth, mass, and you know, and, and all the other places, it does not mean there's no space. It's just operate by another dimension. Glory to God. And one of the things, so when people face limitation, what the natural realm does is that the natural realm will look for another law principle that can override what is being done. For example, have you ever gone to a counter before and you bought some things and you said, I don't want that thing before and they will call for a manager and they say, override. Is that not it? So what the natural realm does is that they don't fix the problem. They just look for another principle, another code that will override it. So for example, how do we fly? We should not be able to fly. There's a law of gravity that says if you go down, you come down. But the natural realm uses another law, the law of what? Lifts. To what? To override the law of gravity. So, smart people know if I can get tools and spiritual laws, I can override the limitation of the natural system. So, natural system says you can have a baby. The law, medical law says we can use high VF to push you. You know, but there are laws and there are laws. So, there are natural laws, there are also what? Spiritual laws. And, and what I'm teaching you is that how can I know a superior law that can override? So, Doctor says we can't have a child. We can override that. They say we can get the finance. We can override that. They say you're going to have a divorce. We can override that. How can we know the laws? They can override things. We do it every day. Sometimes you walk into a place and someone has destroyed the atmosphere with their body, um, with their body waste. You know what I'm talking about? And, and what do you do? You, know, you, you go in there. You know. And what you do is simply like, oh my God, this place is funny, funky. Oh God, who did this? And everybody just looks sainty. Don't do that in church this morning, amen. <laughs> and, and what do you do? You just take something like a nice prayer. And, you're like, Ugh. and after about five minutes, the smell changes. What did you do? Override. If you don't like the atmosphere of your life. <laughs> If you don't like the atmosphere of your life, you don't have to stay, you don't have to stay in that fungi finest. You don't have to stay in that fungi marriage. We can get the atmosphere of the spirit in her. And what? Override. Somebody shout override. Somebody shout override. Somebody shout override. We can override it. I understand what the doctor said, but they're gonna talk based on what they have, but we can override. One time, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus was praying and the sheep had gone very far. And the apostles were trying to keep the sheep away. And all he did, this one of the biggest miracles, he just said, hey guys, it's me. And he just overrode and walked onto the sheep. That's amazing. So they said, people like you, we can walk here. I understand, but we can override that. They say, people with your kind of history, this can happen to you. I understand. We can override that. They say, people don't get married at the age of 45. I understand. We can override that. He said, with your, with your womb condition, you can carry a child. I understand. We can override that. You know, I was in Abuja yesterday, where, you know, just meeting people, and we had this hundreds, literally, the hall was almost packed. I mean, there were two, one or two rows to the end of the hall, almost packed out. And, and when the people gathered, you know, one lady just said a testimony and that first touched me because she shared a testimony about how she was going to commit suicide until she watched me on Instagram. And she said, I locked myself in the room for three days. 
He said, I have kids. I left the kids to nanny and they said they should never have them around. And I was just preparing myself to die. He said, you turned up on Instagram and, you know, I just put it on a live. And thank you all of you that comment, all of you that, see, doing next level prayers, doing the services, all of you like, learn to comment, learn to say something, say hallelujah, praise God. This lady just wrote, I'm one, I've locked myself for three days, I want to kill myself, put it there. And I, I never even knew people do that. He says, all of a sudden, people just began to DM her, DM her, put on the light, open the door, put on the light, and from a place, because our life was in a mess. Through that program, she, she got sustained. A week or so after, one major financial problem was solved. She received five million naira. Then what happened after was that she had a contract with Airtel that had been cancelled to 2019. He said after one of the prayers in the in, in Abuja church, she got a call, and the person said, we've been looking for you since 2019 to come back to get your contract. He said we, and she could have killed herself. Let me say something quickly. Everyone that feels depressed and suicidal, this is my word to you. The only reason you feel that way is this, because you think your future is worse than your present, and that's not true. You're looking at the wrong thing. Change what you're looking at. Focus on something else. You've been through something bad, as, as bad as this. You came out. You will come out of this one also. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. But the key thing is this. This lady said, I don't know why they've looked for my, me for two years. He said, and they said, we've used your old number, your Instagram. We just came. He said, come back and get the contract. And he said, I got the contract. I think it was nine figures contract and eight or nine figures contract. I can't remember right now. And he said, I'd lost it. Why? I don't know what was wrong with her. But as soon as it began to override, the very things that did not work before began to work. So, this morning, what I'm teaching you is that I understand what I've said about your finance. Someone says, you know, I read online and someone says, it's a curse to be in Nigeria. I said, is that what you think? It's okay, but we can override that. We can override that. You lost your capital? We can override that. You lost the business? We can override that. You have a child that's behind developmentally? We can override that. So, this morning is about developing spiritual tools. They're spiritual tools. So the same way when the atmosphere is fungi, the, let me tell you something. It's not as though Christians are not powerful. The challenge is this. We don't know what to use the power we have. So when an atmosphere is not fungi, we bring an air freshen out. When things are not going well, what spiritual tools do I have? To be able to use them at my disposal. They're tools. Bring the tools for me. They're different kind of tools. And different kind of tools do different kind of things. Bring all the tools for me. You know, all the tools for me. Different kind of things do different kind of things. You know, for example, if, if, you hold, if you see me holding this rake, it's obvious I don't want to cut. Is that not true? Yes. Some Christians, you need to know, my problem, it's the, the dimension to my problem, it's not a rake I need. What do I need? See, you must know that not Prayer is not an all-purpose drug. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sink, 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 yes, sir. sink, 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 sink. Prayer is not what an all-purpose drug. If you see me holding a rake, rake I use. I can't use a rake to cut clothes. That's not the tool for that. Rake is used for something else. You can give me something else. If you see me holding what? If you see me holding a tester, see, definitely I'm not in the garden, but it's another tool. I'm using to test electricity. This is a tool to test electricity. If you see me holding what a screwdriver, you know that there's a screw to lose somewhere. There's something to lose somewhere. This is a star screwdriver. It's not even the normal one. There's, there's something to lose somewhere. If you see me holding a spanner, if you see me holding a spanner, you know that there's going to be a knot somewhere. I have to unscrew. The same way, there are all these things. The same way, there are all these things. They're also spiritual tools. When you read the Bible, you see the spiritual people seem to know. And this is the difference. Because they knew the tools they had. And they trained themselves in the tools they have. They seem to function at a better place. So, come say, why am I frustrated as a Christian? Maybe you're frustrated as a Christian. You want result, but you don't know the spiritual tools that you're meant to have. And you don't know how to apply them. So, when you want to test electricity, you bring the rake. You use the rake to test electricity. And you say, oh yes, but this is not what to test electricity. What you need is what? A tester. But because the tester has worked for you last year when you want a miracle, you're always in the tester. But what you need now is not a tester. What you need is what? It's a spanner. 
And what happens to people is that the tester worked before. We must always use the tester. Moses used the rod once or twice. But there was a time he was meant to speak to the rod. He used the rock and hit the rock. And God says, wrong tool. You don't hit the rock. You speak to the rock. There are times you use a rod. There are times you speak to the rock. Oh my God. Are you hearing me? <laughs> there are time is fasting. There's time is prayer. There's time is sleep. I, I don't know why you're going back because I'm not done yet. So there are different kind of tools. But we, we're not used to it. So this is what happens. <laughs> see, see, see the problem of Saul? It was the armor of Saul that always got battle. This battle with Goliath is not about the armor of Saul. This battle with Goliath is about stones and sling. Stop using outdated spiritual weapons. Because he won that battle, does not mean to win this battle. Did you know that although seas and rivers open for Israel, they all open different ways? There was one, he raised the rod over. There was another, the priest stepped on the bridge of the water. It's all opened in different ways. The challenge is that you think because it worked here, it needs to work now. That's why you have a teacher on the inside of you called the Holy Ghost. So that you can know what to do at, oh my God, it's so quiet in here this morning. Oh, those online, it's so quiet in here this morning. So that you can know what to do at every situation, at every circumstance. Can we talk about spiritual tools? So this one's about spiritual tools. One of the tools, one of the tools we have, one of the tools is we have a spiritual fetcher. I, 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 don't, want, I, I don't need this right now. We're not, we have a spiritual fetcher. All of you that live in the, abroad, you may not know what this is. But in my country, we have a well. We are like Israelites. A well is something you dig deep down in the ground and there's water meters behind and you take a fetcher and pull it inside and you begin to draw and you begin to draw someone says how is a spiritual tool because in the bible god tells us what our fetcher is turn your bible to the book of isaiah chapter 12 verse 3 <laughs> someone say ha 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 oh glory to god shout amen. amen isaiah chapter 12 verse 3 go ahead and put it on the screen are you ready hey what is our fetcher <laughs> what is our fetcher are you ready Let's read together once ago. He said, with joy, what do we do? We, we draw, what do we do? We draw water out of the well of salvation. Someone said, what does this mean? Let me explain to you. Number one, salvation is the word soteria or sozo. Salvation is not just being about born again. Salvation means all of God's blessing. Being born again, being blessed, having children. It's about total wellness, total prosperity. That's what salvation is. Salvation is a total package. It's like a phone that has a banking app, a calculating app, a, a mirror. has all those things in the phone. It's just one phone. That's what, that's what salvation is like. He now says this. So in salvation, there's being born again. There's Holy Spirit. There's husband. There's job. There's wife. There's house. There's car. There's plot of land. There's project. There's financial breakthrough. And God says, but it's a well. And how do you draw it out? It says, joy is a force of the spirits. When you want something in salvation, you take, put it there. And you begin to walk. You begin to draw. What is it? Joy. What is joy? Just the state of being joyful. What does that mean? Whatever you are not joyful about, you cannot attract into your life. Yeah. Ah. Whatever you are not joyful about, you cannot attract into your life. Why? It's with joy. Have you noticed the areas you are depressed the most about is the areas you have no miracle? And you think that's why you're depressed. No. The way it works is this. You have to be joyful to draw. It takes joy. It says with joy, we draw out. And you will see people, you will see people, you know, you see, you see a lot of single people that are so depressed about their marriage and they wonder why they're not married because the way you're going to draw out your marriage, the way you're going to draw out your husband, the way you're going to draw out your wife is by what? It's by joy. You see people that are frustrated with their business and they wonder what's going on here? The way you're going to draw out the finance, oh my God, you're looking for funding. This is how we draw out the funding. We draw out the funding with what? We draw out the funding with joy. What is joy? This is what joy means. 
I have every reason to be depressed. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Joy is a spiritual state. It's not what happens to you. Because joy is a fruit of the Spirit. It doesn't come and go. Happiness comes and go. That's happiness. That's not joy. Joy is resonant. So, question. Every time I have the opportunity to be depressed, to be discouraged, I said, no, the joy of the Lord. See, joy is active. It's active. It's, joy is not what happens to me. It's what I let out of me. So, I, I see on social media that my girlfriend that we're both single is engaged. I don't go, oh God, what is happening to me? No, sir. If I get depressed, I lose the water. What do I do? I get my fetcher. I say, praise God. God has done it for her. God is in the neighborhood. He's doing it for me. I start shouting. I start screaming. People think I'm crazy, but it's joy. Hey, even when I get the disappointing news, I may shed some tears. But I remember that it's with joy, not with tears. I draw waters out of what? The wells of salvation. The problem is that you are not joyful enough to pull. With joy. With joy. With joy. With joy. What is joy? Joy is a spiritual tool. Someone says, you praise God because it's well. That's not true. Even when it's not well, we are praising God. Because joy is not a function of circumstances. One lady sent me a testimony. He said, Pastor, this thing works. I was struggling to have a child. You told us to begin to give thanks to God for 21 days. He said, I began to give thanks for 21 days. He said, I just want to check right now. This is the first time in my life I'm pregnant. I said, the reason is simple because with joy we pull out. Listen to me. What you're depressed about will not change. It's what you're joyful about that will have a miracle. You know what I want to challenge you to do? Anything that's causing you pain. Refuse to start negative about it from tomorrow. Every evening, 10 minutes. Father, I thank you about this. Father, I thank you about this. <laughs> what, what, this is a problem. When people want to be, when people want to do joy, they pull, they just pull and say, I've pulled for three days. It depends on how deep the well is. Are you hearing me? Some well, there's water at the top. Some well is really deep. So you have to keep pulling. It seems seem as if you're not there. But you keep pulling. But you keep pulling. So say, I've been pulling for one week now. You keep pulling, sir. But eventually, with joy, with joy, the bucket comes. I'm like, my God, your bucket is full of your testimony. Because with joy, I draw water out of the well of salvation. You know what I know? You know what I know? It's difficult to be depressed and be expected of a miracle at the same time. You need to find a way to keep your joy. That was why as soon as Zachariah began to say nonsense that would destroy the fetcher, the angel said, you will not talk until we have the bucket in hand. You need to stay away from people that will use their mouth to destroy your fetcher. They say, yeah, can this your marriage still work? Ah, you know the way men are. You just say, my brother, you carry your fetcher. Eh? My sister said, far away. My sister, you are correct too. You carry it. You said, the one we have done, our friendship, eh, is enough. The friendship we have done for these five years, see where it has brought me. You carry your fetcher and go away. Are you here, someone? Are you here, someone? You are believing God for some finances and they are giving you all these terrible reports about the finances. You say, ah... Don't worry, you. you have done enough, eh? Though, though, you have done enough, eh? The reason why is that if you're not careful, people will take your joy away. Yes. And this is what I know. If the devil cannot steal your joy, he can't keep your stuff. Yes. You hear what I said? Yes, if the devil cannot keep your joy, he can't steal your joy. You know what joy does? Even on your worst days, you're strong because you're joyful. Yes. The major challenge I... I oh my God. Can, can you hold this? The major challenge I have with people is this. This is a major challenge. And listen, because some of you say, how do you be joyful when things are not well? The same way, how you eat when you're not hungry. Oh, exactly. Egg like on us. Is that not true? Yes, have you eaten just because you wanted to be alive? Yes. That's exactly the way it is. 
We're not joyful because things are perfect. We remember that joy is where our strength comes from. The challenge with not being joyful is this. The moment you stop being joyful, you become negative. And guess what? Anything times negative is negative. Your prayer times negative is what? Negative. Your giving times negative is what? Negative. That, that's why, see, you are either joyful or you are negative. There's no middle ground. You are either joyful or you are negative. There is no middle ground. You are either joyful or you're negative. About that marriage, you are either joyful or negative. About the child, you are either joyful or negative. About the progress, you are either joyful or negative. And the more you stay in joy, you draw water out. Let me say something to you quickly. And this, maybe I will say this and say something and I'll close. You can go back. Thank you. Let me say this quickly. Oh, glory to God. Happiness, something happens to you, you are happy. Joy is not that way. Did you hear what God did to them when they, said, when they were in front of, I think, River Jordan? God said, let the priest go. They were going to fight a war in Second Chronicles. God says, let the singers go first. Did, let me tell you something, you don't understand. U.S. has to attack Nigeria without prayed as a prayer country. Then I said, this is how we're going to start the attack. The war front is at Benin Republic border. They said, let all the pastors, no, not the pastors now. They said, let all the musicians go. So they now called Mark Sam, they called Sinach, they called Abbey. They lined them up in front. And those who were so stupid. Just imagine Sinach, Nathaniel Bassi, Abbey, Mark Sam. And they just said, just give me one song now. Hallelujah. Hey. And the U.S. is there with ammo tank. And Shaka Bulagon, praise God. <laughs> But you know why they were going there? Because of the joy of the Lord. What joy does to you is that it gives you power not to give up. That's what it means. Let me say this quickly here. If you find yourself always giving up, it's because your joy level is very low. How do I know? Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. If you find that you're giving up on your vision, if you find that you're giving up on 2020, <clears throat> 2021, if you find that you're giving up on your dreams, one thing is sure, your joy level is low. And how do you bring it up? I stir up joy. I stir up joy. I stir, you, with your mouth, you stir it up. Glory to God. Can I get water? Hallelujah. Amen. Let me close. <laughs> that was meant to be some kind of introduction. But now we spend the time talking about joy. Thank you. Praise God. Joy is very powerful. Listen to me. Whatever you're joyful about, you will have a miracle about it. Yes. Whatever. The easiest way to lose what God is doing in your life is to become depressed. And people become depressed because legitimately, there's reason to be depressed. But we remain joyful because we are normal by what we see. We are more by the word of God. What does that mean? That place we're expressing our approval, you got a letter, you've been rejected. Instead of you to cry, you're going to thanksgiving. Father, I thank you because you are walking. There's nothing wrong that you cannot write. There's no wrong you cannot write. I thank you because you are walking. I thank you because you're walking. Listen to me. Joy is the proof that you have not given up on victory. You are pregnant, you lost the baby, you say, I'm finished. No, 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 no. Listen to me. There's nothing that God has done that I cannot do again. Calm down. There's nothing, you say, I thought I was going to marry him, he just broke up, I'm finished, sir. No, sir, there's nothing that God has done that he cannot do again. God does not have last miracle. He has a series of miracles. What am I saying to you? One of our spiritual tools is what? Joy. As I close this morning, let me read one, I want to just read something to you because I don't have the time to be able to, I'm going to, I hope I can talk about in the third service. Let me just read it to you. Ephesians chapter 6. Because what I was meant to talk about, Pastor Mika is really smiling because they all understand that I'm meant to talk today about thoughts and words and use joy as an example. But let me just jump in on it one time. Ephesians. So, one of the spiritual tools is joy. And not the spiritual tool that God has given us is thoughts. Your, see, let me say, every look up here, please. 
your thoughts are more spiritual than you know it. There are no random thoughts in life. Every thought comes from the spirit positive or spirit negative. There are no random thoughts in lives. What you think is a random thought is a, is a programming. Let me say something to you. Many of you just think I would not succeed. There's a reason why you think that way. There are no random thoughts in life. Many of you just think my life is very difficult. There's a reason why you think that way. Uh, uh, oh my God. L let me see if I can jump. Just read something to you. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I, I want to. Oh, wow. John chapter 13. Thoughts. And if I can read James chapter 1. It's amazing because I thought all this were here. John chapter 13. And James chapter 1. Verse 2. John 13 verse 2. <laughs> this, ever look at me. This is how Satan destroys people. Next week, I will teach more on this concept. You must understand... That thoughts are very powerful. Ah, this fetcher took me a long way. <laughs> because I just remembered what I wanted to tell you before I told you the fetcher. Wow. <laughs> I'm looking at the time. I promise them we're not going to overstretch the service. Ten minutes. <laughs> Praise God. Leave, leave John. We'll come to John. Let's go to... I was going to, I said Second Kings. That was where I started from, right? Second Kings. Yes. Second Kings. Ah, wow. This fetcher just took me a long way. Second Kings. I was trying to show you something. How the spiritual has the power to manipulate the physical. That's what I want to show you. And I want to show you from something that sometimes never known to the God of Israel. Look at this. Second chapter 3 verse 24. Look at this. And it came to pass that the camp of Esau, the Israelites, rose up and smote the Moabites. So they fled before them and went forward, smiting the Moabites, even their country. So this is the case of Saul that did to business and they began to get, it began to run them out. The Bible says, and they beat down the city on every good piece of the land. Every man is stoned and filled it. And they stopped the wells of water and felled the tree. So they were destroying the Moabites. Only in Kirashit left their stones. However, the slingers went there and when about it verse 26 i want to read something let's read together everybody online offline read it. it's 26 let's go see the king of moab when they saw that it was difficult to break through this is a brief. he took the man he wanted to eat they could not enter has there ever been a time in your life I don't know if this happened to you before, but this happens in life. Annual income, 50 million, 50 million, 50 million. You want to break it, you want to work hard. But well, you can't break it. Annual income, 10 million. You will work hard. You will find your, another year you come, you will find yourself there again. You will, you will say, no, this year, marriage. You will work hard. They say, I'm not a good boyfriend. You will behave well. The thing will still break up. Yes. Business, you want to start up and start. You what Bible says they could not break through. He took the best of the best. You know this this guy was an unbeliever. See what he did. Next verse. I want you to read it yourself. And he what? Let's just want to go. And what? Then he took. Did you hear that? This is an idol worshiper. When he couldn't break 
through. He said, I need spiritual help. You know what he did? He took... To, did, can you see how I just worship us think? It's not today I don't worship using money people or ritual though. They, from the Bible days. He took his son, built an altar and burnt the son alive to invoke spiritual power. What happened? Look, look. And there was great indignation. Bible says because of that, something arose against Israel. There's what you do when you want to resolve to. I'm telling you, let me tell you something. There are things that meeting will solve. English will solve. Negotiation will solve. You will see that say, let's have a round table. You know, sir, this is what I'm proposing. <laughs> when you're competing with people like this at work, because many of you don't know where they have been to. You just go there and wear suit and tie. L- let me. <laughs> people that are using foul to take men. People, I'm telling you. <laughs> One of <laughs> one politician called me, walks to the governor, one of the governors, and said, Pastor, there's something. How do you sit down with the governor and agree that this is what you're going to do when this person comes? This person comes, and the governor doesn't like the idea at all. Spends five minutes with him, and every single time he changes his mind and thinks you are the enemy. He said, and the man has a reputation that whoever he talks to listens to him. I said, when this is coming, call me. Hallelujah. Amen. The reason why is that is only God that knows what they tongue before they talk. What they tongue before they talk. And let me tell you something, eh? Some of you have not seen supernatural power. I don't... See, I would tell you this. My father's closest friend, he died this year. Very... I mean, he was... If I mention his name, many of you know, he rose up to the top, one of the largest multinationals. He was, I think, second or third in command in the 90s. And um, the MD had resigned, and they thought they would put him there. They brought a white guy from Europe to come and head the company. He was upset. He told me the story himself. Not that he didn't. He told me himself. He said, what kind of nonsense is this? So they can't make me because a black man to head the company in Africa and West Africa. He told me, he said, every Wednesday when I leave work, I go to Senegal. I fly first car to Senegal. He said, there are some witch doctors. I don't know what they call There's a name. Is it Sunga? They, there's a name they call them. He said, these witch doctors do not see sun. They've not seen sun in 10 years. They don't step out of the house. See, they are always on the mats. He said, for three months, I was going to Senegal. He said, I will go on Friday, come back on Monday. Go on Friday, come back on Monday. He said, after three months, when the white man got back to Europe, he could not explain how he got back home. It was when he got back to Europe. He now said, what am I doing here? He said, I don't know. He said, but I'm not going back again. He said, they took him. He, he told me. He said, now nah, I'm born again. I don't do things like that again, though. He said, but I did. It's when you have not seen power, you argue with power. Someone said, knowledge is power. Power is power. Huh? <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> knowledge is power. I understand, though, but power is power. Huh? Ah, when you see power, even knowledge to bow. I'm just showing that this is a real. And I'm showing you because, because as you and this I'm showing you, as you advance in life, if you are not rooted in these things, my fear for you is this: you will get wrong people that will start exposing to the negative things, and you will not do it from a place of faith, you'll do it from a place of fear. This is my own father's best friend. This man went to battle. The Bible says the battle was tough. He took his child and burnt him. Why? As soon as he burnt him, the Bible says, and a great indignation rose against Israel. He provoked something. When the prophets of Baal were with Elijah and they were cutting themselves, say, Baal should send that fire. They they knew what they were doing. They were provoking something by the shedding of blood. I'm saying to you because there is a natural dimension. So, this joy I spoke about is how we offer our own sacrifices. 
That's one of the ways. You want to get, a, you want to get something that you can tell that the opposition is more than physical. That this opposition is spiritual. You change the dynamics. You take the battlefield from physical to spiritual. Are you here? I'm telling you, take the battle from physical to spiritual. <laughs> so, I wanted to establish it. Let's just close it. Eh? We'll continue next week. That's, that's the best thing. Because, because at the back now, they are telling me why I must close. Should we are here next week, right? Eh? Yes. Eh? We'll I got in a very good place. I know this is the place you're like, please just finish it. So what we want to do is to now begin to tell you the spanner of the spirit. Bring those things again. There's a spanner in the spirit. There are testers in the spirit. There are rakes. There are rakes that used to rake out whatever you don't want in the spirit. There are testers used to test what is there. You test. I, I mean, I, I remember one man and so we, we were going somewhere and someone just introduced. Either, either the girl came or it was the girlfriend of somebody. And they just came, hey, hey, hey pastor, and just shook. And as soon as I shook my just so much, I said, this girl is loaded. It's what he means. I said, ah, she's full. Evil spirits are inside. Ah. <laughs> I said, demon present. <laughs> I said, the tester has revealed it. And it's not something you see with the eye. Um, one time, you know, sometimes I will go with my kids with their children, um, sport, and all of those games. So, you know, my son, um, one of the, one of the, one of the, girls that, um, I, I mean, I'm not sure, one of the friends, you know, had come over. I'm not sure if we went to sport or they come over to the house. So I just, you know, so I came, I mean, my wife had been talking and they, they knew their family and all that. As I came, I asked my wife, I said, who is that girl? My, you know, you know there's way you say, who is that girl that's even like, ah, this girl that is not even up to 10 years old. I said, who is that girl? Because I could tell that there were many. I said, who is that girl? He said, my wife said, why are you saying that? I said, I said, there's something about her. And I said, it's true. The, I think the school she is now is in her fourth school at 10 years old. Because she does damaging things. She's always fighting. She's always like, she's violent. She has history. Just at 10. I can't remember the story. So, even, so she always had like, she's the one that is the trouble of the class. And I said, ah, it's not her fault that the programming They've put it in her software. They've changed her software somewhere. And it's an upgraded version. <laughs> that the, <laughs> the operating system in her system is not the one that for children. The, she, because she has, that's a problem. You know, when you see a 10-year-old child is carrying software or son that is 50, the behavior cannot be normal because it's operating system. You behave according to operating system. I said the physical mirrors the spiritual. Once the spiritual moves, the physical moves. Let me show you another one. You know, I didn't want to show you a lot before, but let me just show you one. In the book. Wow. Praise God. I say praise God. I say praise God. So how can someone go to the hospital? They treat and treat and treat, and they can't tell what is wrong. Because it's not science that put the sickness there. Listen, you know, do you know what a curse is? Many of you don't know what a curse is. This is what a curse is. Curse is a, an invisible empowerment that makes sure that whoever is cursed, whatever it does, will not do well. When a cursed person moves into your life, you, you will not do well. Except you know who you are. The curse is that powerful. Did you read the story of Jabez? Jabez, see, if Jabez sold oil, it will be in debt. If Jabez sold debt, it will be in debt. Jabez was cursed. If Jabez entered a car, it would have accidents. And it was not his fault. It was just something done to him. I, I want to show you this quickly. Oh, wow. I'm praying I can. Num I think it's Numbers 13. Numbers 13, 13. Can you put it on the screen? Numbers 13, 13. No. 
It's Joshua 6.26 and 1 Corinthians 16.34. Quickly. Joshua 6.26. See what the Bible says. I'm, I'm showing you how the spiritual controls the natural. And let me tell you something. I'm not showing you so you're being responsible. I want you to be aware. So, not like, hey, hey. No, 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 no. When you're not aware, we'll not give you the tools so that you can deal with it. Because you're not being aware and that makes you a prey. Are you here? All right. So, Joshua 6, 26. Let's read. And Joshua, let's read together. I want to go. And Joshua adjured them at that time saying, what did he say? That built that what? Jericho. So when Jericho had collapsed, Joshua put a curse and says, anybody that builds this city, what does he say? He will lay the foundation there in what? It says, as he's laying the foundation, the first one will die. What did he say also? And in his youngest son, shall we what? He said, as soon as he completes the gate and put the gate there, his last son will die. When that firstborn dies and they bring him to your hospital, what can you do? They say, he just slept and woke up. There's nothing. He will just sleep and wake up. Look at what happened. <laughs> First Kings chapter 6, 16 verse 34. Let's see what this happened. First Kings 16 verse 34. Because sometimes some things happen. And you can't just explain it. First Kings 16 34. Are you there? First Kings 16 34. Let's read one to go. In his days, did he heal the Bethlehem, build Jericho, and he laid the foundation in what? Abiram, his first son. So, he, you know the amazing thing? He might not know what is happening. That's the thing. Because, you know, because we are reading, we can follow history. He was not even a Jew. He doesn't have the books. So, he would just be building a thing, he's doing a good thing, hey, building a thing, big, big, big. He'll say, Oh, God, your first one has died. Bam. The Bible says this, and he set up the gates thereof in his youngest son, Segun, according to the word of the Lord, which is spake by Joshua, the son of Nun. Ladies and gentlemen, there are dimensions and there are dimensions. I'm telling you the truth. There there are, I told you some about the supernatural. I said the supernatural is the most control function. You will not see it, but it's changing channel. What I said supernatural what is remote control function. You don't see it, but it's changing channel. You don't see it, but it's changing finances. It will take them from movie magic and bring them down to super sports. And you are the one watching. Meanwhile, see, the reason I'm teaching you this is that. I'm hoping that you can be the one holding your remote control, not somebody else. Because many people, the remote control of their life is in the hands of somebody else. And they are compelled to watch not what they want, what somebody else wants them to watch. So they wonder, they press it. They're like, eh, they've changed the channel again. Not because I want it, because of what someone else wants. But the good thing is this. The remote can be in our hands. We can have vital spiritual tools. I just told you one of the tools. One of the tools is joy. One of the tools is joy. One of the tools is joy. Everybody that's looking for a baby, this is one of the things you used to get pregnant. He said, let the barren sing for joy. He said, let them break first in joy. Meaning that if you can stay joyful without a baby, you will have a baby. I'm telling you, these are powerful principles though. For business people, you have your tools. I'm telling you. You are trying to, are trying to get pregnant. He says the way you get pregnant is what? It's joy. That's it. It's joy. You just start shouting. You start rejoicing. Start giving thanks, giving offering. People think you are mad. No, sir. I'm invoking the forces of the spirits. Why? It says, sing, give me that verse, Isaiah. It says, single barren. For many are the children of the, of the barren that those that have conceived. Glory to God. So when you are barren, you just, you just break forth in joy. You break forth in joy. The same thing. What is it? 
Isaiah 54 verse 1. Let's look at it. Isaiah 54 verse 1. That thing about joy is for those that are barren. Then those that are going to consistent difficulty, prolonged difficulty, is joy that brings it out. It's joy at Thanksgiving. See what it says. 54 verse 1. 51 verse 1, right? 54 verse 1. Receive Holy Spirit at the back. See what it is. Sing, O a barren, thou that did not bring forth, break forth into singing. Cry aloud that did not travail. For now, more are the children of the desolate than the children of what? Of the married woman, says the Lord. The same thing. Everyone that is here, that you feel as if you are stuck, is, the, is rejoicing. How do I know? James chapter 1. What does it say? It says, count it all joy. When you fall into divers, divers means several. So you have lost money, you have lost this, you have lost this, you have lost this, you have lost this. Yeah, yeah. What do I do? Count it all joy. You are walking the principle. So you are here, marriage has not worked, finance has not worked, contract has not worked, job has not worked, you are in debt, this has not worked. The problems are too much. He says, when you fall into diverse, difficult time, he says, count it joy. You begin to say, Father, this is the moment. It's my job to teach, it's just to practice so. When you are looking for finances, what is in your hand that you can surrender? The Bible says, it's the Libra soul that is made fat. I'm telling you. It says, blessed are the mercy for they shall show you mercy. You want a contract. You show mercy because you want to obtain mercy. You don't come to the... House of the Lord empty handed. He said, Blessed are the merciful, for they that shall, shall obtain mercy. He said, The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall also be watered. You water the dimension you want to be watered. You don't use rake to test where current is. Rake and tester have different elements. You know what it is. What is the pattern of those? Praise God. I say praise God. We are coming on Wednesday and Sunday, right? This Wednesday is night of worship. All of you that stalk, want something, you're getting here, you'll praise like mad. You'll praise like mad. Why Micah is the only woman in the Bible that was buried till death? And the reason why is that she could not praise. Rather, she was criticizing praisers. She said, David, look how you're dancing. David said, that's why you'll be buried to death. Let's pray.